Hey everyone, Thrasher here. This video is going over the most basic terms and concepts used to describe motion, to describe how objects are moving. Now these terms are very important because we're going to be building on them not just in motion and something known as kinematics, but really for most of the entire AP Physics 1 course. So let's get into it. Our very first term is known as position. And position, as you might have guessed, is the location of an object, where an object is located. But it goes a little farther than that because Position is a measurement, and it's measured from some reference point. So I have an example here of a person, of an object, with several different ways to measure to represent their position. For example, this person is located three meters from the wall. If we had something known as a meter stick, and this is a meter stick right here, and this obviously represents one meter, all right, they are three meters from the wall. That's their position doesn't have to be from the wall. Maybe we could say there are 63 inches, another way we can measure position, from a door. We often use meters in this class, but I just have a few different examples of ways to represent position. It doesn't even have to be a physical object, like maybe I just randomly had some spot on the floor. Well, you could say they're eight feet from this spot on the floor. None of these are more or less correct than the other. others. They're all relative, they're all fine. What I will say is often in a math problem, we'll say the starting position of an object is zero, just to make our life easier. Okay, for example, we could say just like they're three meters from the wall, this person is zero meters from where they're standing. And that often will make any equation that we may be using easier to work with. So all of these are fine, three meters from the wall or zero meters from where they're standing. That's position. Here's that meter stick again. Next. Distance. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on distance. You already know what it means. It's just the length that an object travels. It's the total path. Imagine taking a ruler or one of those meter sticks and laying them end to end. If you added up all those feet or all those meters, that would be the distance the object travels, this blue or this purple line right here. We spend more time in this class on displacement, so that's our next word. Displacement is a little specific in its definition. It's the change in position, and we just learned what position is. So here's that picture we saw before. The distance was this, this purple path, that total length traveled. That is not the displacement. Displacement only cares about the change in position. So they started here, they ended here. The change in position, the displacement, is this green line. So it is not the same thing as distance. It's really an equation. Okay, It's looking at this change, this difference. It is measured in meters, so it is going to be something uh, that's going to be represented in meters in this class. Okay, Displacement is represented by this delta x. And this uppercase delta in math, it means change in. So this is literally read as change in position. And that's what displacement is. So that's why that popped up right here. This is our mathematical symbol for displacement, the change in position. That's what displacement means. And it's really just subtraction. You look at the final position where the object ends up, and you subtract from that the initial position where the object began. It's always final minus initial. Some students tend to flip those in the beginning. Make sure you're always doing the final location minus the initial location. Okay. You could write final and initial like this. That takes a lot of time. So often in physics, it's represented with kind of zero subscript, nothing written right here. Or this symbol here. This symbol is not, but it's really just the number zero. This is read as x minus x naught. x naught means like the very beginning at time zero versus some later time. So the initial value and some final value. A little weird at first, but we'll be using this quite a bit. Okay. Here's another example real quick. Imagine you and your brother or you and your sister go to school. So you start at the same location. You take the red path. Your sister or brother takes the green path. You have different distances, but your displacement comparing the initial spot and the final spot, that's the same thing. Or imagine you're starting uh, at some location. You walk three meters to the right. You just turn around. You walk three meters to the left. Here's an example of how we would plug in the math. Well, you started off at one spot. You then traveled back to where you started, your displacement is zero. Okay? Or you could have represented this instead of like three meters away and three meters away. You could have said you started at zero, you ended at zero. Zero minus zero is zero. One last thing, the ball starts right here, then it rolls to the right, it rolls to the left. The initial is zero, the final is this minus four. So what's the displacement? It would be minus four or four to the left. 
It doesn't matter what happens in between, because displacement only cares about the beginning and the end. Speed, next one. A lot of you already know what speed is. It's the distance an object travels per unit of time. The equation, distance divided by time, the units, how we measure speed, it's always going to match the equation. So distance, as I mentioned, we use meters. Time, we're always going to use seconds in this class. So the unit is going to be just the equation with the units plugged in. Meters over seconds. Meters over seconds. That's speed. Velocity. We're going to look at average velocity. It's the speed of an object, which you know, but it also includes direction. Velocity is something known as a vector. There's going to be another video that quickly talks about vectors a little later on. Okay. Or another way to define velocity, average velocity, it's the displacement of an object per unit of time. Or you might hear the term the rate. Rate means per unit of time. So it's the rate of an object's displacement. It's an equation. V for velocity. That's why I have V right here. Velocity is displacement, delta x, over the change in time, change in time, delta t. Written out, xf minus xi, final position minus initial position, divided by the final time minus the initial time. Here it is using those uh, symbols I showed you earlier, x minus x naught over t minus t naught. What I'll say is often this is just going to be zero, right? Imagine any race or any game, you start the clock at zero. So just to make it simple, this is always going to be zero. We'll usually write these out like this. Change in position divided by whatever that elapsed time is. The units are the same as before. They're even the same as speed. It's going to be the top divided by the bottom. Meters for displacement, seconds for time. Now, I will say for average velocity, if we have a car that's driving down the road or it's rolling down the track, you could look at different velocities. You could look at the average velocity for the entire trip, in which case you would do this entire delta x. I don't know, maybe that's 30 meters divided by time, the time to go those 30 meters. Or you could look at the average to go maybe 5 meters, okay? and you would use the time to go over uh, those 5 meters. So you could apply average velocity to different scales, so to speak. You just have to make sure you're consistent. If you're looking at 5 meters for your displacement, make sure you use the time for those 5 meters. Okay, so there's our average velocity. All right, instantaneous velocity. This is really the velocity that an object has at a given moment. Imagine you see a car driving down the road and you take a snapshot. All right, what speed that car has at that moment that's the instantaneous velocity, the velocity at that instant. Imagine when you're driving, you glance down at your speedometer. The speedometer is showing the speed you have at a given instant. Okay, this will be used a little later. Now, some people have trouble with this term, instantaneous velocity, because if you think about the equation, at some instant, doesn't that mean time equals zero? Ooh, and it's very interesting, very smart of you to think about that. We're not going to worry. This is almost more than anything just a flaw in the definition of the term instantaneous. We're not going to get into semantics here. It's really a limit that we care about for this instantaneous velocity. Instead of looking at that car over two seconds, we're going to look at it over a very tiny amount of time, 0 0.001 seconds, if it helps. Okay, we're looking at the limit as the change in time is going to zero. If you think back to math or to calculus class, all right, even if something has uh, an undefined spot at one location, right when delta t equals zero, the function can still have a limit. Don't worry too much. No one's trying to trick you. The instantaneous velocity of an object's never gonna be like, oh, infinity, because time can't equal zero. Don't worry about it. It's just the velocity something has at one moment. That's all you need to worry about. Acceleration. We're almost done. Acceleration is the rate of change of an object's velocity. Think of speeding up and slowing down. So we have this GIF right here. We have two cars. The blue car increases its velocity more than the black car. You say that the blue car has a greater acceleration. Okay, because at the very end of that frame right there, the blue car is ahead. It must have a larger velocity, at least in that short time period. It accelerated more. Okay, so it's the rate of change of an object's velocity. Now, this is really an equation. Here's acceleration, lowercase a for acceleration. It's the change in velocity divided by time. So here's delta v, change in velocity, change in time. v minus v naught, final velocity minus initial divided by t. Remember, we're almost always going to say that the initial time is zero. So it's the change in velocity divided by t. What are the units? How do we measure acceleration? 
Well, the top has units of meters per second, and the bottom time, that's just seconds. So this is the unit for acceleration. You would read this as meters per second per second. Or you could read it as meters per second squared, because I have this in the denominator. I have another denominator right here. If you do some algebraic simplification, that's meters over seconds to the second power, meters per second squared. That's the unit of measure for acceleration, delta V over T. Now, something I want to point out, because this is often a point of confusion, acceleration is the change in velocity. You are comparing two velocities, the speed or the velocity of something in the beginning, the velocity of something later on. It is not the average velocity, okay? You are always comparing two velocities. You're not calculating the average and then dividing that by time. That is not the definition of acceleration, okay? And like I said before, you know something is accelerating if it's speeding up or slowing down, okay? Acceleration is a vector. Again, we'll talk about vectors a little more later. Okay, those are our key definitions. Thank you for sticking with it. I appreciate you watching the video.